hi guys welcome back to mama soj vlog how are you guys doing if you are new here you are welcome and if you are returning subscribe god bless you as you always come back to watch my video my people not be smart you know and i'm not seeing a different news now they land from my table and as the news they come that's why they carry on calling you to call sharon with her for today's video i'm going to watch out together with her all right my people we could go watch the video to see what really they apple for inside the video my people report some years ago and your current president described it about blood oil when he was here, uh, President Buhari. So uh, the lady just there, please. Yes, uh, you. Yeah, madam. Please go ahead. Second question. Right. Can I sit or stand? Uh, stand up, then people can see you, please. Right. Good Thank afternoon, you. all. Your Excellency. Wonderful. The question I, I wanted to ask, you have touched on briefly. My name, first of all, is Baroness Tiruka Davis. Peasant said, I'm a Nigerian. You've touched on security, very important issue in Nigeria. But you've not told us how you're going to manage this. We'd like you to tell us how you will manage security in Nigeria. And second part of my question, there's loads of kidnapping of women and girls in Nigeria, rape of our young children in Nigeria. Can you tell us? Uh, your Excellency, how this will be managed. Thank you. Thank you very much for being very precise. Uh, Mr. Tanumba, we had many questions coming in uh, live stream uh, about how you're going to combat terrorism and violence against women, including from Bolupi Omosori. Um, so the gentleman right here on the corner, yes, you, sir, there's a microphone there. Please go ahead. Uh, please be no no long speech we don't have time so put your phone down you're 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 intelligent Thank gentleman. You. i know you can ask it straight well, my name is uh, Odiana Sadamnik Mafia. Uh, thank you, Asiwaju Bolat Tinubu, uh, for taking this opportunity to come and speak to us. Uh, you may know that uh, I was one of your beneficiaries, uh, even though I grew up in Lagos, but I was never a native, but I was granted uh, the opportunity to, you know, to work in Lagos State, you know, even though I was from a different state. So uh, that, uh, you know, tells me about how your policy is likely to be. But my question is this, because uh, having, wor having worked for 10 years, you know, there as a social development uh, worker and youth worker uh, during your administration in Lagos State, before coming here to qualify as a uh, solicitor, uh, practicing here in the UK. I'm more concerned about the young people. Can you what talk? Yeah. program do you have for our young people? As you know, uh, most political parties benefit from the, the, the uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, they benefit from the, you know, uh, goodwill of young people. Okay. And so have you got plans, you know, that would generate yeah. training, you know, Appointments, thank, thank you, and also job security. Okay, okay, thank you so much. People. So, what are your plans for, for for youth, young people? If you would like to answer the questions, Mr. Tunumbu, please, if we can keep quiet for one conversation here. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, let me one uh, once and demonstrate here. One of those philosophers I wanted. Doctrine that I believe firmly in is teamship, unbreakable team. To demonstrate that, I will choose the first question assigned to Dele Alake. Okay. And the second question assigned to Nasiru Erufai. <laughs> and third question assigned to to Ben Ayadi. All right. So uh, can we have microphone coming in the front? And the first question is about blood oil. Uh, pump, yeah, oil. There, this gentleman. Yeah, yeah, Elder Fire can see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go Security ahead. Security Nasiru Erofa. Yes, thank you very much for that. 
Now, the issue of uh, oil theft in Nigeria is, is as uh, you know, uh, deep seated and uh, it's been long standing. It's been there, it's not a new development, as we all know. It's been there for decades. And then we discover the various dimensions daily. Now, the incoming administration, by the grace of God, of Bola and Etinumbu, has devised some uh, uh, novelties in terms of strategies. First of all, to combat oil theft is tied to the security situation of Nigeria. Now, the questioner has uh, linked it with uh, um, connivance with the security agencies. Now, the Bala Metinumbu administration has a three pronged approach to this. In terms of regenerating, revamping, and recalibrating the security um, equipment, technology, that's one. The human angle, in terms of the size of the security, too. Today, we have over 200 million people, and there's no way the current strength of our security agencies can adequately cope with the gargantuan and enormous problems of security, securing lives and property. So the personnel of all the security or coercive agencies will be increased to cope with the large population of Nigeria. That's another dimension. The third dimension is really employing state-of-the-art technology like drones. We know today that there is, in terms of kidnapping, in terms of even identifying the oil theft and the oil pipelines, the illegal pipelines that have been rigged, that have been embedded in the ground for years, you cannot but employ technology like drones to know, pinpoint the actual spots where these things are. And this has already started. The current administration actually is making uh, very good strides in this respect. They've been unearthing and discovering and arresting, apprehending the, the, the uh, culprits in charge of what. So this will be intensified. It will continue and actually be taken to a higher level, such that in the first six months of the Bola Metinumbu administration, oil theft would not only be reduced tremendously, the goal is to stop it in its entirety. I think that's what happened. Uh, 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 that, that does not mean a departure from the present administration. Mm. The classification, a, a, a theft and a receiver exists. Mm. Mm. So you have to classify the receiver has taken blood money. Mm. Uh, Governor, I'll reply, please. Go ahead. I'm your excellencies, my friend, Mr. Alex Vines, ladies and gentlemen. Um, security has been a big issue in Nigeria in the last few years. And that has affected not only rural economies, but agricultural production, commerce, and everything else. Um, the Bola Tunubu administration will address these challenges or whatever remains of it after the efforts of this administration in at least three ways. First, policing. Nigeria has about 300,000 policemen for a population of over 200 million. We need at least twice that number. That will be achieved. That will be achieved by amending the constitution so that policing can be at federal, state, and even at community level. With increased security footprint, there will be less and less of criminal activity. The second step is to look at our armed forces and security architecture. Nigerian armed forces are not more than 200,000 in size, the Army, Navy, the Air Force. While some countries are even looking at a space 
uh, uh, a space military, we are struggling with just less than 200,000 uh, members of the armed forces for a country with a population of 200 million plus. The numbers, the equipment, the skills, and the training of the armed forces will be scaled up, will be increased rapidly to meet the asymmetric nature of the security challenges that we face. Because today, the uh, armed forces are not fighting with other countries. They are fighting with non-state actors. And the doctrine, the training, the numbers must change. And the Bola Tinubu administration already has a blueprint which is embedded in our action plan to address this. We'll scale up the numbers of the armed forces, we'll ramp up not only the numbers, but the training and equipment. In Nigeria in 1967, the total size of the Nigerian army was only 10,000. Because of the civil war, within a year, we ramped it up to 250,000. So it can be done. And what we are facing in Nigeria today, banditry, terrorism, separatism, and oil theft requires a new approach towards security, enhancing the numbers, providing enhanced technology, and collaborating with the rest of the world to ensure that our country is not only internally safe, but not a threat to our neighbors. Thirdly, the issue of proliferation of small arms following the collapse of Libya due to no fault of ours uh, will have to be addressed through collaboration with countries like Mali, Niger, Sudan, and Chad, and so on and so forth. This we have already started, but this will be deepened and broadened under the leadership of a new security team under the Bola Ahmed Tinubu administration by the special grace of God. Thank you. Thank you. We have a third question on education and youth, of which I have, uh, we have got about 30 questions on this that have come in, including from Mariam Haruna. So Mr. Tanumba, maybe you'd like to answer that question. I, I would love to do so. Yeah. Uh, youths are part of today, but they are the greatest asset for tomorrow. We need to prepare them from now, from our all-inclusive government. The youth has been part of that. I want the governor of Lagos State to stand up, to stand up. Yes, it's a you. Uh, and uh, it's, it's driving the fifth largest economy in Africa mm -hmm. today and the transformative uh, government or, 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 of uh, our legacy, in my own personal legacy. Yes. The education system is to change. We overhaul it. Tinker with some areas that no, with the philosophy that no one will be left behind. Mm. There will be student loan for all the students. We are going to, we are going to reform the Almagiri system. We are equally going to build additional schools and recruit more teachers and train them well. And they teach them the opportunity to govern. Give them that opportunity. Broadband, technology hubs, and so on and so forth. We'll be established that youth can even develop Technology languages on their own and make a better 21st century approach to governance in Nigeria. Okay, we're having another round of questions. So I start with the lady there, you, yes, please. 
tell us who you are and keep your no it's the lady behind you i'm so sorry mariam <laughs> adewale um nigerian in diaspora of over 40 years i know we have remittances over 30 billion remitted to nigeria from worldwide every year and i do appreciate that the leaders they do come every electoral cycle to speak to us in diaspora but we can't vote is there any plans you have sir with regards to diaspora voting thank you so much good question so the lady just here you madam yes please go ahead yes this lady yeah uh hello uh, Louise Doas from AFP News Agency. I cover Nigeria. I'm based in Abuja. Yeah. I have two quick questions. Uh, no, one, please. One? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, well, my question is, what exact steps will you take in your first year uh, in, in administration uh, to reduce unemployment rates and in which sectors will you create jobs? Okay, so that's mm -hmm. the second question on reducing employment. And the gentleman just there, we will be coming back another round. Yes, you, sir. Go ahead. Excellency uh, John Cookson, Arise News. You spent a, a long time today talking about the problems that Nigeria has, but you've been part, you've been an integral part of the government for the last two terms. Why should people vote for you? Why are you a fit and proper person to be president? Thank you very much. So the question was, you've served uh, two terms in this government. So why should you be now elected as, as president? You've been done your time in government. And then we have the question on uh, remittances stroke, uh, how can the diaspora vote? And then the, the question from Agence France Press on um, uh, how you're going to get uh, employment up, how you're going to get economic growth. Those are the three questions. Well, the same method, uh, we call on Wally Edun to answer the first question is it yes first um, question why diaspora can't vote can we have a microphone please coming here mm -hmm. oh. Oh. that's the uh, greatest respect for the after question that's a question for the gentleman who's coming to you in january <laughs> the chairman of i oh, okay for him to answer oh, okay well that that's well, the answer then um, well, but definitely doesn't have an objection. No, but, but, but let's just have matter. It's no. a constitutional matter. But please, 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 please. Let's let Mr. Tanumbu have he's the main. Okay, I, I I I think uh it was Erufai last night that mentioned that the yes, for voters are entitled to voting. If you make contribution to the economy with remittances that you have been making, your right to vote should not be abrogated, not promoted. However, we are still build, building confidence in our democratic and vote, voting system. INEC is still yet to assure us during this election that electronic transmission, the technology being used for accreditation and the you know, total food count is reliable, dependable, and assuring in our democratic process. Before we introduce a complicated element of mailing ballots and so on. Please, please, please. So my, my, my message is this uh, conversation will be continued on 17th of January. We have Professor Yakubu here from INEC. Please come back and have uh, a discussion with him. Uh, second question, the, 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 the one on economic growth and, and reducing uh, unemployment. Please, sir, uh, the microphone is just there for you. Thank you. Good afternoon. The as uh, a uh, presidential candidate said in his speech, his aim is to increase economic growth. He talked about getting at least 7% growth because that in 10 years, will, that will get, help to double GDP growth. And um, the key 
to his policy for increasing economic growth, achieving rapid growth, is to enable the private sector to make the investments that will increase productivity, grow the economy, create the jobs, and reduce poverty. That's the trajectory. And in particular, he's going to, uh, to implement both, as he mentioned, the monetary and fiscal policies that will free up the space for private investment, particularly in infrastructure, through and also through the uh, promotion of agro-allied industrial processing zones. It is in agriculture in particular where the jobs will be created that will enable not just growth, but inclusive growth that provides enough um, employment opportunities that will lead to reduction of poverty. So the Tinubu administration is essentially all about um, private sector driven economic growth. And um, foreign in direct investment will also be a key element of that process. That's the objective of the, of the administration and that's what they intend to achieve through the economic policy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there was the third question from Arise News on that you've served two terms, Mr. Tunumbu, already in, a, in, in associated with government. Why, uh, why should you be present, I guess, is, is the question that was asked. I guess my name is Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, <laughs> and the current president is uh, Muhammad Buhari. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nowhere in the constitution that says, you know, a current administration cannot be a continuity in some their own ways. It doesn't mean, it doesn't uh, remove me from adaptation to my own economic philosophy and developmental program. I did it in Lagos. I converted the greatest liability, threatening the environment and Lagos assistance to asset of magnitude, uh, magnitude value. Hmm. I've employed various hands in Lagos, whether you are from Lagos or not. I've encouraged private investment in Lagos more than any other part of the country. In fact, beating the federal government in, uh, before we took over the reign of the region. Uh, vision, courage, and can do attitude. My people, now the video now on a new watch really soon. On a see what you have for inside the video. All right, my people, I would like to end the video for you. Make sure let me know what you all are for the comment section. And if you are never subscribed, make sure subscribe so that you will not miss any little edges where I upload. And I'm about to like all I will start. Bye, guys. Catch my next video. Bye, guys.